All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise and glory. Be to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachak, Wadash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well. And blessings to the hopeful elect teaching this word in all sincerity and in truth, in the hopes that we may edify and feed the flock and the lambs of Yahweh Shai, especially in these last days. Um, and you know, in this in this video, I'm just gonna do a quick video here. Um, it's been a tough uh, couple of weeks um, for me personally, uh, but uh, hey, but we we still got to teach regardless, man. That's a part of the fight. Hey, the scripture says, "Through much tribulation shall we enter into the kingdom." You know, and really, it really ain't gotten. Um, really, the heat's got about to turn up. You know, um, but we got to keep on forging. Or keep on pushing through, you know. He that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. I thought I'd just, you know, just say that for anyone that's um, going through difficult times. Um, as I speak right now, I just remember that, you know, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. And that we wrestle against, you know, the spirits. Like it says in uh, Ephesians, the sixth chapter, principalities. You know, there's demons out here on these people. You know, but we got to keep on pressing forward, man, and um, striving for the truth unto death. And just like the scriptures say, the Lord shall fight for us. So, and the Lord is not a man that he should lie. You know, and as you're going through what you're going through, just and you turn on the news, just like I did this morning. You know, and um, lo and behold, what did I see? Now I don't know if this is, you know, um, new news. I think it's I think it's quite quite new. Um, because I did look it up on Google and. You know, there were certain, uh, you know, articles that popped up on it that was pretty much just released um, as of today. So, you know, you got a lot of things that are going on in these last days. You got a lot of protests. You got a lot of uproars with the people. But that's all a part of the scriptures. That's all a part of prophecy. All right. And you got it to where, you know, King Charles, you know, the, the, the British royals, they went over there to visit York. All right, and you had it to where, um, you know, as they stepped out of their, their vehicles and whatnot, you know, they, they got eggs thrown at them. You know, they got eggs hurled at them. And uh, I never thought I'd see the day when a British royal... <laughs> like, when's the last time you ever saw the Queen step out of a step out of a vehicle and then eggs were thrown at the Queen and then she was stepping all over egg yolk and all over the floor? And I mean, that's what you're about to see with King Charles. All right, and there's a reason as to why this is happening, and people are saying because of the, uh, you know, the, the the ties that the British royals had or a hand in slavery that they had, the ties to Brit the ties to British slavery. All right, uh, which again, that's uproars of the people. And remember, you know, even though these elites want order web chaos, which is order through chaos, to come forward and establish and push their draconian measures because they know. That they have but a short time. You still got it to where the Heavenly Father is making things happen. He's he's creating this division. All right. And he's creating, you know, the scripture says one people shall stand up to fight against another people. Now, before I play you this clip, I'm going to go ahead and get you that scripture in um, Second Ezra's the 15th chapter. Because it's very, very important that we read scriptures like this. Because that's exactly the time that we're in. Uh, in order that we may... You know, filter what's happening on the news through these prophecies, man. Because it's all about these prophecies. It's all about biblical prophecy at the end of the day. Just like the, what the Lord said. All right. It says, uh, Second Edges 15 and 1. Behold, speak thou. All right. It says, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy. And what did the word prophesy mean? It means to say before. All right. And that's exactly what we're doing through the Holy Spirit. It says, which I will put in thy mouth, save the Lord. So... You know, these are not our words that we're speaking. These are the words of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. You know, that's putting the words in our mouth to say what, what 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 we're saying. The Lord is just using us as his mouthpiece, if you will. Alright? And in fact, there's a scripture on that. Um, I believe it's Hosea uh, 6 and 5. Alright? And it says, Therefore have I hewed them by the prophets... I have slain them by the words of my mouth. All right, so the prophets are coming with the words 
of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. He's putting the words into the mouth of the prophets. They're his mouthpiece. And as the saying goes, don't shoot the messenger or don't kill the messenger. We're just the messengers. All right. And that judgments are as light that go forth. And we've got the light. We're the true Illuminati on the right hand side, if you will. You see these other people walking around with their heads stuck up their ass. You know, the scriptures speak about gross darkness to people, right? Gross darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness to people. But guess what? The Lord says his judgments are as the light that goeth forth. And we're reading you the judgments of the Lord. All right. And we're shining that light. We're sounding the alarm. All right. And we're slaying you by the words of the Lord's mouth. You know? Okay. Because the Lord said his word was not going to go out of void. All right. But it's going to prosper in the thing where to he sent it. So going back into... Going back into Second Ezra 15 and um, and 1, it says, Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. So these words are faithful and true, okay? Meaning there's not one part of these prophecies that's just going to slack, okay? Because in a, just like it says in the book of Habakkuk, you know, the second chapter uh, write the vision. Uh, uh, not, not write the vision. Uh, in fact, let me just go to it because I don't want to butcher the scripture. Uh, the vision is yet for an appointed time. All right, so this is um, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 3. It says, For the vision is yet for an appointed time. All right, uh, but the point that I was quoting was in verse 2. All right. In fact, let me start from the top. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me. So we're supposed to be watching first and foremost. Like the scripture uh, commands us to be circumspect, right? Ephesians 5 and 15. See then that you walk circumspectly as wise and not as fools, redeeming the time because the days are evil. So we're supposed to be watching. All right. The Lord said, didn't the Lord say, I've set watchmen upon thy walls, O Yerushalayim, which shall never hold their peace. Ye that make uh, day nor night, ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence till he establish and to, till he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. And we're not a praise in the earth right now, so you know we're commanded not to keep silent, man. All right, we're supposed to be sounding this alarm. All right, and we'll watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord Yahweh answered me, right? Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables. That he may run that read of it. So we're supposed to make these prophecies plain. And it's plain for the elect to see. But for those that are not of the elect. It's not plain for them to see. Because guess what? The spirit of deep sleep has been put upon them. Alright. The Lord has blinded the minds of them that don't believe. That can't get it. That's why the disciples asked you how was shy. Why speakest thou unto them in parables? And he said because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. All right, it says, uh, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. All right, and the vision is what these prophecies, man. All right, and we're at the end now. We're at the we're in the last days of the last days, if you didn't know. And we're at the end, and being that we're at the end, these prophecies are speaking and they're not lying. It says, though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. So these words of the Heavenly Father are not tarrying. Okay, so going back to 2nd Ezra 15 and 2 and cause them to be written on paper for they are faithful and true. These words are not tarrying and fear not the imaginations against thee. Let, let, the, let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee for all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. So everyone that don't believe man, all the unbelievers, they're going to be destroyed. All right, and that's that. It's basically get down or lay the fuck down, man. All right. Now, before I go into reading, I'm going to jump down to verse 14. Um, I'm going to quickly play you this clip that I, I opened up on the British. This is from the Royal Family Channel. All right. It says King and Queen Consort whisked away as eggs thrown in York. All right. So eggs were thrown at them in York, man. All right. So without further ado, let me go ahead and hit play on this. Check this out. And before I even continue playing, let me just say this is a shame. 
unto them, man. This is a shame unto the British royals. This is a shame unto them. All right? Because they're, they're walking around, strutting around like they're, you know, like they can't, like they're untouchable. But guess what? Now, they're at a time now where the egg, eggs are being thrown on them and they're getting looked down upon, man. Like the scum of the earth that they, they really are. All right? Mr. Great Reset himself. You know, the scum of the earth that these, these royals are, the scum of the earth that the elites of Esau, Edom are, all the Edomites, they are scum of the earth. They are known as the basis of men. The scriptures speak about, I have seen, seen servants upon horses. These are these guys are really servants, man. All right, and a horse represents power. So right now, everything has been turned upside down in this society where you got peasants on, on, upon horses in a position of power and you've got princes walking as servants upon the earth. Just like it says in the scriptures. But the Lord is going to flip everything right side up, man. And we're going to be ruling in the kingdom. As it is written, Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. And this truth is coming out about who Esau is. And who the Israelites are. The true Israelites are. Alright? We are Hebrew Israelites. Esau, right? He's a Hebrew Edomite. Alright? They are the wicked that the Bible speaks of. And they've been given power to take peace from the earth. And that's why you're seeing all these uproars of the people, all these protests happening because the wicked is in rulership. All right. In fact, um, since I said that, let me go ahead and really quick pull up the scripture because uh, it's all about the scriptures, man. All right. We can put these clips together and that and whatever, but it's about the scriptures first and foremost. This is Proverbs 29 and 2. When the righteous are in authority and who are the righteous? The Israelites. So when we're going to be in authority, which we will be in authority... All right, because that's biblical prophecy also. And the Lord is not a man that he should lie. All right, that's got to play out. But when the righteous are in authority, right, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. When the wicked, let me read that again. When the wicked, and who is the wicked? When you go to Malachi 1 and 4, it will tell you that Esau, Edom, they are known as the borders of wickedness. All right, so when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn and the people are mourning. That's why they're throwing eggs at the royals, man. Because the people are mourning. <laughs> okay. There's some dead-ass kingdom. Yeah, the flat-ass trumpets in the background, man. You know, this guy with his inflatable hands. These people are through, man. They're done. Esau's done. All right, is this the best that the, the, the royals of the British royal family, is this the best that they can, they can whip up? Is this the best that they can do? This kingdom is full of shit. They're walking on fucking concrete with chewing gum stains on it, man. This is how these elites roll around. All right, this is how these British royals are presenting themselves to the people, man. All right, the weak scumbags of the earth that they are. All right, and right now the earth has been given into the hand of the wicked, but it's going to be flipped right side up, man. Alright, the people are mourning. Look at this. Oh, oh, you see it? Yeah, King Charles. Every time he goes up to the crowd, man. Alright, this guy looks like he's ready to croak, man. You just had... Uh, Evelyn Rothschild, he just croaked. He just went to the spirit realm, man. All right, hey man, the Lord is the Lord is working. The Lord is doing stuff, man. All right, he just got an egg thrown at him, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna take it back just a little bit so you can see it again. Ooh, do you see that splat, bro? You know splat. And that's a shame. Let that be a shame unto them. All right? The British royal family. Let that be a shame unto them, man. All right? In fact, man, I'm going to put a curse on all these... I'm going to put a curse on all these Edomites, all these British royals tonight. When I, before I go to sleep, Lord willing, I'm going to make it a habit to put a curse on them before I go to sleep every single night, man. In the name of Yahweh Bar Hashem Yahweh Shai, man. You know? Because these devils, man, they got to fucking go, man. But they... They're going down. They're going down. And this is a sign that they're going down. And you see that in the background? They've got someone put up there. Not my king. You see that? When the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. Why are they saying not my king? You see that, man? 
Damn, I didn't even know I could zoom in on a, on a YouTube video like that. I think YouTube must have updated it. All right. But look at them. They're getting thrown. They're getting eggs thrown at them. Not my king. Look at that. That's in, that's in the media. Mainstream media, man. Damn, bro. They're looking stupid. They're looking terrible. And let that be a shame unto them. And it is a shame unto them. And it's so, he's so proud. He's trying to act like he didn't see the egg splat. He didn't hear the egg splatter. But he's looking down on the floor. Look at him, man. The, the woman behind him, she's looking down on the floor. She's thinking, somebody even went, whoa. You know, they're trying to calm the crowd down. Who threw, this, who threw those eggs? You see that, man? Look, look at his feet, man. Right next to his black ass shiny shoes. Eggs. Right there, man. And that's, that's, a, that's the king of England right there. That is the king of England right there. And there's an egg right there. A smashed raw egg right near his feet, man. And that's the... Ba Look at that. Chewing gum stains on the floor. The concrete. This kingdom is whack. Esau, you're through, man. You're done. Esau's finished, man. <laughs> I said to myself, i got to do a video on this. Because these, <laughs> these people are done, bro. They're finished, man. you got to you got to have fun with it. And all we got to do is watch and see this place crumble, man. Eggs thrown at King Charles. So I googled it, man. I just wanted to figure out if it was a, if it was like, like a re-upload of like a, a, a an earlier post or something like that. But this this says two hours ago, so I'm gonna read it. It says, um, London. Like I said, I saw this clip this morning. All right, when I was watching the news, I saw it come up this morning. It says King Charles the Third and Camilla, Queen Consort, were visiting the city of York on Wednesday. When a protester hurled at least three, three, all right, at least three, and I like that number three, <laughs> you know, and a uh, free exit them and shouted, this country, now check this out, this country was built on the blood of slaves, you see that, so the, the, the truth is coming out on these devils, man. All right, and they're going to have to swallow it down. And you see the curses are slowly transferring onto our enemies. You see how they, they eat, the heathen are being looked down upon now? Barakata Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, man. Bahashem Rakako Dash. You know what? I'm going to get, what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly get this article here. All right, now this is uh, from The Guardian. All right, this is what are the British monarchy's history or historical links to slavery? While it is difficult to say how much of the royal family wealth is owed to the slave trade, the past links date back to the 16th century. All right, it says protests have taken place during the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge's Caribbean tour. So this was like seven months ago. I remember that when they went over there to the Caribbean, they were getting he heckled. Protests were happening over there as well. With the royal family having historically benefited from the slave trade and the British Empire. But what exactly are the monarchy's historical links to slavery? Now, I'm going to skip down to... Uh, where's the part I wanted to read? Um, between 1690 and 1807, an estimated 6 million enslaved Africans were transported from West Africa to the Americas on British or Anglo-American ships. The slave... And that weren't, that weren't a fucking... That weren't a cruise ship, bro. You know, where you get room service ordered. I've been one of those Caribbean cruises before. All right. When you get room service and you, you know, you, you can walk. It's like walk, you can walk down a down a street on a boat. It's like a city that's built on a boat. You've got swimming pools and shit. You know, that weren't no that weren't no holiday resort, you know, for Jake to be guiding on them slave ships, man. You know, the, the, the conditions that they had Jake uh, stacked on top of each other. Um, in fact, let me pull up a quick image. Um, slave conditions. If I just type in slave ship conditions, and I'm gonna go to um, images, you see that? You see how they had us stacked up, man? You see that right there? Yep. Look at that, man. That's how they were transporting us. We were nothing but cargo to them. Okay. Look at this one. Look at this picture here. Stacked on top of each other like fucking sardines, man. Like sardines. And that is no exaggeration what I'm saying, man. You see Jake just, you know, shoulder to shoulder. Men, women, children. Look at that, man. Not one 
ounce of space was wasted on the cargo slave ship. Store room. They had the store room over there, but then you had Jake were just filling every fucking nook and cranny on the car. This is what Esau has to pay for, man. Plan of the lower deck of the stowage of 292 slaves. 130 of these being stowed under shelves, under the shelves, as shown in figure B and figure, I can't really, figure B and figure uh, S, is it? You know? But the point is there, man. The point is there. All right? So we were being stacked on the shelves. We were being stacked on top of one another. Okay, you look at that. Women, boys, men. You see what they were doing, man? So Esau's got a lot to pay for, bro. And yes, your British royals had a hand in this shit, man. Okay? So they're going to go into slavery themselves. And that's that's what the Bible says. All right, it says the slave trade was reported by the royal family in parliament. It is difficult to estimate just how much of the current royal family's wealth is owed to slavery. But it is. And this King Charles, he came out when he was back as Prince Charles. He came out and he apologized about, you know, the colonial uh, uh, past and links to slavery. I remember when he did that speech. All right. But, and why did he do that? Because they went out with the old in with the new. They want everything that's in the past to stay in the past. All right, but the Lord requireth that which is past. The scriptures tell you that. All right, in fact, let me get that scripture. It's uh, Ecclesiastes, because uh, we always have to bring it back to the scriptures. Um, Ecclesiastes 3 and 15. And this is a reincarnation scripture too. All right, if you can receive it, it says, That which been, that which have been is now, and that which is to be have already been. And it says, And the Most High Yahweh requireth that which is past. All right, so the Lord requires that which is past. You ain't getting off scot-free, bro. All right, it's your turn to drink of the cup. You damn devils, man. This is uh, Colossians 3 and 25. That he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he have done, and there is no respect of persons. So that's doing wrong, man. Well, you know, you did wrong. You know, this weren't doing right. All right, to us, to our people, that was doing wrong. So guess what? You're going to receive for the wrong which you have done. And them curses are going to be transferred onto you. Okay. So, um, so now what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to go back to this article here and I'm going to play the rest of the clip and we're going to get some scriptures, man. All right. Some even more scriptures, you know, going into Esau's future. All right. Cause I know he, he's sitting there biting his nails. You want to know about your future? You just stay tuned, man. I'm going to read you some scriptures. You know, get ready for slavery. That's what we got to say. That's the We don't want no payoffs. We don't want millions. We want no. We want you in the handcuffs. We want you in, in chains. Yokes of iron around your neck. Just like you did to us. All right. It says, the profits of the tra slave trade funded. Um, but it is understood that the profits of the slave trade funded the treasury, as well as Britain's industries, buildings, railways, roads, and parks. Um, and you know what? That that reminds me of um, wisdom of Solomon, the uh, the fifth chapter. All right, from the from the very top where it says, "Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him, and made no account of his labors." So, do you think that they make account of our labors? The fact that we, you know, you know, they have they they made money off of us, you know, pretty much free labor. All right, and they have they have so much deep ties to slavery. But do, where do do we see a penny of that? The benefits of slave or the slave trade? No. Do we see a penny uh, uh, or do we see any benefits off of what was built over here in Great Britain? No. All right. And they still got us as slaves to this day, man. So they're going to have to go into chains. They're going to have to go into slavery, man. Because they didn't make no account of our labors, man. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear. When they see what? The righteous man standing in great boldness. That's why they're in trouble, man. That's why they're coming down with great wrath. Because they know that they have, they have but a short time. Just like the scripture says in Revelation 12 and 12. And shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. So far beyond all that they look for. So it's going to be a strange thing for them to see the Israelites getting beamed up into them ships, man. All right, or into the father ship. Which is Yahweh Shai, which is going to come back on the father ship, man. All right. So here you have it. All right. A protester hurled... A, at least three eggs at them and shouted, this country was built 
on the blood of slaves. Now, speaking about blood, you know we've got to get that scripture in um, Habakkuk, man. Um, Habakkuk 2 and 12. It says, Woe unto him, woe to him that buildeth a town with blood, right? And establisheth a city by iniquity. See, the scriptures ain't lying, bro. Okay, what did we just read in the article? It says, as well as Britain's industries, buildings, railways, and parks. Roads and parks. These buildings, railways, roads, park, railways, all of that was built off the blood of slaves. And the scripture says, woe to him that buildeth a town with blood. Woe means destruction. And establisheth a city by iniquity, man. All right? So, Esau, you're through. All right? And earlier I mentioned about... Um, I mentioned about uh, shame. This is jump to verse 16. It says, Thou art filled with shame for glory. Uh, drink thou also, and let thy foreskin be uncovered. The cup of the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai's right hand shall be turned unto thee, and shameful spewing shall be upon thy glory, on thy glory. So this is shameful spewing, not my king. Someone was holding a placard saying, Not my king. And also, look, this country was built on the blood of slaves. That's shameful spewing, man. You talking about you, you apologizing about the you know colonial past and well we don't want your apology man we want you in slavery we want you in chains you know fuck the apology man all right and only ultimately that's the will of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai so you better get to know the Lord's will because the scripture says in Exodus twenty one and sixteen and he that stealeth a man and selleth him or if he be found in his hand he shall surely be put to death so you're you're in for it man. You know, Esau is in for it, bro. All right? And there's going to be no fucks given when we're putting hell on you and ain't going to be no mercy shown unto you. The scripture says, let there be none to extend mercy unto him. Back on the point of blood, right? You build your town with blood. This is Numbers 35 and 33. So you shall not pollute the land wherein ye are, for blood it defileth the land. All right? So this very land that we're on over here, Great Britain, it's defiled, man. All right? By the bloodshed of the saints, who are the Israelites. All right, and the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. Yeah, all the whippings, all the butt breaking, all right, all the lynchings, all that bloodshed, man. All right, that land cannot be cleansed, but by the blood of him that shed it. So you shed our blood, man. So what do you think is going to happen to you? All right. Now I've got this scripture that I wanted to bring out before I forget it. Going back to 2nd Ezra 15. All right, because I started off in 2nd Ezra 15 as well. But I was going to jump to the point in verse 14. It says, Woe to the world, and then that dwell therein. For the sword and the destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their hands. So it's going to get to that point where people are just going to be, you know, rolling on each other, man. You're going to have mobs of people, one people coming up against another group of people, and they're going to be fighting with killing instruments, man, in their hands. For there shall be sedition among men, which is inflammatory speech, and they, we're having that right now. All right, yeah, you, you know, you got to where the Yays, the Kyrie Irvings, you know, that's all sedition. All right, you, you having to, you know, where they're being cancelled, you know, the deals that, you know, that they had were be, take, being taken off the table now, you know, but that's all that's doing is fanning the flames of hatred and division among Jacob and Esau. And this is what the Lord is doing. The Lord said there were going to be divisions. All right, it says, and invading one another, and they should not regard their kings. Nor princes. Alright. And this is what's happening right here. Look at this image man. They shall not regard their kings. Alright. That's not regarding your king right there man. Look at that man. Look man. They shall not regard. Someone said not my king. Let's go back to that placard in the, in the audience. You see that? Let me get a, bit, a better image of it. Uh, it, was, it was clearer before. But there you go. Oh man. You know. Uh, there you go you see it not my king they shall not regard their kings <laughs> no princes man this guy went from a prince to a king and they ain't regarding him man they're throwing eggs at him and the queen consort is you know Camilla you know throwing eggs at him bro <laughs> alright and the course of their actions shall stand in their power and a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able to see Esau man he's coming down with that great wrath there's going to be checking stations, uh, chipping stations, checkpoints. You ain't going to be able to go from one city to another. This is what Esau wants. Okay, he wants hatred. He wants order while chaos. He wants chaos on the streets. 
He wants to establish order, man. All right? From the chaos. So this is what they're coming with, man. So break, we've got to brace ourselves. We've got to pray. We've got to watch as well as pray that we enter not into temptation. All right? The scriptures speak about the hour of temptation, man. But after all of that, you best believe Esau and these other nations, they're going into slavery, man. And i got a scripture here to prove that. Isaiah 14 and 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. And set them in their own land. Okay. Damn, where's the... um? Let's see if... Uh, um, there you go. And set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them. And they shall cleave unto the house of Jacob. The Israelite for foreigners, man. Okay. It says, And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them. In the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids, and they shall bring and they shall take them captives whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. And you can't tell me that transatlantic slave trade was not oppression. You can't tell me that we're still not being oppressed to this day, man. All right, so whose captives we were? No, they're going to become our captives, man. All right, and starting now with them being exposed. And the truth being bust wide open, man. The truth, the gospel being preached throughout all the world and for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. The Lord said this was going to happen. All right. So let's go to uh, Revelation 13. You know we've got to get this bad boy right here. Revelation 13 and 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. And he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. All right. And, and Esau did lead us into captivity, man. All right. We just looked up a couple of examples. All right, you had the, the auctioning blocks, the slave, uh, the transatlantic slave trade, the cargo slave ships, you know, the lynchings, having us work out there in the field from from sun from sun up to sundown. All right, um, and he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And who were the saints? The saints are the Israelites, man. All right, Psalms one forty eight and um. 14, he also exhorted the horde of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the sons of Israel, a people now unto him. Praise ye the Lord. So, hey man, we are at the time of the end. You know, shameful spewing is upon his glory, man. Um, and Esau is going down. Uh, let's get Sirach. See, this one just popped into my head real quick. Sirach 10 and 8. Because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches got by deceit. So everything Esau has, he got it by deceit, man. That's unrighteous dealings, all right? Injuries, riches got by deceit. A kingdom is translated from one people to another. And who's that one people to another? Let's close out on 2nd Ezra 6 and 9. For Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it to follow it. And this is what they don't want to happen. But it's not about what they want. The Lord has appointed their bounds that they can't pass. Okay, we, we know in the scriptures that the Lord, the most high ruler for the kingdom of men. All right. And he set up over it the basis of men, just like it says in, in the book of Daniel, man. All right. But he's at the end of his rulership. You see the division among Esau. No kingdom that's divided is ever able to stand, man. All right. And the British royal is getting eggs thrown at them. That's the least of their worries, man, because they're about to go out in flames and chains. They're about to go out in flames and chains. Three eggs thrown at the British Royals is the least of your worries right now. You wait till the missiles are launched, man. It, we're coming to a time like no other since there was a nation. All right? So with that, man, I pray you were edified. You know? Barakatha Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem Rakaq Kudash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. That rule well. You know? And Shalom to the elect.